What's up YouTube, Son of Terror 92 here, scientist, explorer, wanderer, and welcome to episode 3 of my podcast series called Thoughts on the Cosmos. <laughs> no, not that one. That one's happening on the other channel, Science Epic. We're at episode 5 called The Strange Lives of Strange Stars. Y'all can check that out right here. Whatever. I'm coming at you right now on the 11th of September 2015 with my podcast, Wisdom from a Wandering Scientist. This is video number three. Video number three, y'all. I want to take some time to talk about or actually tell you, tell you a story. Perhaps one of the greatest stories ever told in the saga or legend of Science Epic. A personal story of mine that will echo throughout eternity alongside such works as La Chanson de Roland or the epic of Gilgamesh, mesh, mesh, mesh. I think this story needs to be told in this format once and for all. That is my own zero to hero story. Everyone has them, everyone's experienced them, guys especially. I'm talking about periods of time in your life where you made a stand for something, put a lot of time and effort into it, endured incredible amounts of pain and hardship and became a truly amazeballs better person by the end of it. I call it a zero to hero story. We all have them. You should have as many as you can and if you don't have any, you should go out there and start finding them right now. Find the rush and thrill of challenging and revolutionary experiences because I think at the end of the day, that's what life is all about. Unless of course you're Singaporean, in which case life is about finding a steady high paying job and earning a fuck ton of money. No seriously, they actually do that in Singapore. I'm going to tell this story and lace it over a video of me climbing rocks at Perhentian Island, one of the premier tourist destinations here in Malaysia. Anyone who is anyone who's been to Malaysia talks about going to Perhentian Island. I figure it's fitting that I show this video because while we're talking about zero to hero stories, we might as well be climbing huge deadly rocks while we're at it, right? So here we go. This story begins way back when in 2013. You see kids, for most of my life I've been a very shy person. In fact, I've been a shy person since before I started Science Epic. That and compounded by the fact that I've been forced to get an engineering degree, something that I don't like, don't particularly enjoy, and honestly am not particularly good at, makes for a pretty miserable person. So for the first few years of engineering, I ended up wallowing in that misery. The fact that I was this shy and awkward person doesn't help either. It doesn't make for a healthy social life or good relations with members of the opposite sex. I mean, I had always been a geek. Since high school, I had been this tall, skinny, wheezing kid that didn't have much social intuition. I was the nice guy that never raised my voice for anything and since we live in a world dominated by feminism and political correctness, traditional boyishness or masculinity and being loud and boisterous is, is shunned. I, it's called the nice guy syndrome, yeah, I was one of those people. So I never had the soft skills necessary to be good with girls and it was pretty miserable for a time. Coming out of 2013, that's about two years ago from today, when I finally said fuck it. I've had enough of sacrificing my soul for something that I did not believe in. So I started to take things easy for a bit, you know, just, just living for once. I was taking this subject called control theory and I had a lab session and while I was signing my attendance, I heard someone call my name. It was a female! Holy shit! It was a fucking female! Let's call her... Uh, Ruby Diamond Sapphire? <laughs> Not her real name, but I figure it's a really cool anonymous stripper name. Nice. Real nice. So yeah, I was signing my attendance in lab and then I heard her call my name. I looked to the left and there she was. Holy shit, a female. This had never happened before. So me and this ruby diamond sapphire started to hit it off and I tried to play my cool, you know, try to be all James Bond, super smooth, super smooth like. <laughs> of course, since I had no prior experience of being in that situation, I made all the wrong moves so it was terrible. But for some mysterious alignment of the star's reason, this girl still liked me. We started hanging out, she'd come to my apartment, and we'd watch Game of Thrones. That was when I started watching Game of Thrones actually. Good times. Good times. I liked being around her and I looked forward to our every rendezvous like a sick little puppy. Every moment I thought was worth it, but I still couldn't escalate. 
I mean, it got to a point where this girl was on my bed. She was on my bed, right there, on the very place I would fantasize about collegiate intercourse. There she was, but I still couldn't pull the trigger. So this continued for a while, and the semester ended, and we had a bit of a falling out. Ruby Diamond Sapphire ended up with some other guy during the holidays, and I was stuck in my room that holiday with a box of tissues and my penis in my right hand looking at pictures of Ruby Diamond Sapphire. The semester reopened, and I started to change my outlook a bit. I got a makeover, started brushing my teeth. And washing my armpits. It was a start, but I had a lot of catching up to do. I decided to give it another go with Ruby Diamond. Ruby Diamond. Ruby Diamond. And I asked her out. This time with clear fucking goals in mind. I wanted more than anything in the cosmos to kiss her, to put my lips on hers, and to see what it tastes like. Now remember, I had never done this before. I had never kissed a girl up to the. Up until that point, so I asked her out. She said yes. We went out, and at the end of the night, I take her to this spot in the Faculty of Engineering, designed to get any female wet if you go there past 12 midnight. The view from that place looks like you're standing on a field of stars. And by Jovian moons, it works. That night, Ruby Diamond Sapphire was putty in my hands. Two horny ass young adults standing on a field of stars, with the lights off and not another soul around, as far as we could tell. But I still couldn't do it. She was right there, but I still couldn't do it. I hesitated at the last second, out of sheer uncertainty of what to do next. Once again, I missed my ship, couldn't pull the trigger, went home dejected and alone. But the story's not over yet, mes amis. So the semester passed, and I ended up in my room again, minus the box of tissues and the hunchback fat position. This time, I was pissed, frustrated, and pissed. So pissed I was that I put aside the video games for a bit and googled how to pick up chicks. This led me to a holy tome of infinite knowledge called the game, infiltrating the secret society of pickup artists. It was a book by Neil Strauss, and that's where it all began. I started learning. Quote unquote game or quote unquote pickup, the art of seduction, from simple routines to ways to interacting with women, protocol and all that, how to get confidence and how to not give a fuck and whatnot. And I was like Neo from the Matrix. My brain was on overdrive, devouring content after content, lecture after lecture from people like Mystery, Neil Strauss, Tyler Durden, Liam McRae, Sasha Daygame, Nicola Dolto, Justin Wayne, J T Tran, Richard Gambler. Pum pow pu. The last one up, but um, and let's not forget the the ever notorious straight out of S Switzerland, Julian Blanc. I mean, these guys became my mentors, my sifus, and I devoured every bit of wisdom from every bit of content that I could find. I watched hours of YouTube videos for, by these master pickup artists on how to approach and meet women. This thing called the Venusian Arts, day game, night game, LMR, LTR, this. PUA stuff, there's all sorts of terms and terminologies I got engrossed in. I learned a whole new vocabulary overnight. AFC, Average Frustrated Chomp, Showed, and all these things. It became a lingo. It, it all became a blur until it was time for my first approach. So one day, a friend and I were the third and fourth leg on my other friend's date. We were at KLCC Park, which is this park next to the Petronas Twin Towers. It's like right under it. It's a also a very popular tourist location. One of my friends was on a date with this girl to Aquaria, which is like this aquarium thing in the city. So me and my other friend were left wandering KLCC Park with nothing to do. If y'all go check out my Instagram, Son of Terra 92, and see the picture of the pizza in the park, that picture was taken on that day. We were wandering the park and I said to my friend, Zul, let's go pick up girls. And typical of people who don't care to take any action in life, my friend was like, nah, I'm good, you go do it. At that point, I was tired of excuses. I was tired of not taking action. I wasn't going to continue my sexless path anymore. And I said, fine, I'll approach the next girl I see. And we rounded a corner and right there and then, there was this long-legged, pasty white, red-haired matsale. Matsale is local slang for white people's yo. And she was sitting there on a bench, just sitting there, and I approached her, and it was bad. So bad. You should feel bad. It was a terrible interaction. When I approached her, I made eye contact and gave a smile. I walked towards her, but then just as I was about to finish that last bit of distance, I 
turned right, walked a few steps, then turned left back, then said hello. So that's how wrong it was. So I ended up talking to her and it even came down to a bit of an awkward silence. I ran out of things to say. But yeah, I ran some basic game on her, gave her a high five. You know, that's that's something that old me would not have done. Bravo, good job. I later learned that her name was Anastasia. She was an engineer from Russia visiting Malaysia with her friend. The interaction ended and we went our separate ways. I never saw her ever again up until this point. I realized, and after that, I realized that I didn't die and it felt good. It was terrifying for a few seconds, but it was actually quite fun. That was my first live in-field experience learning game. And ever since then, I've been learning it, approaching it, studying it, putting myself out there, not giving a fuck what happens. I went to France later to visit my brother, and I was approaching like nobody's business. I didn't care that my French sucked balls. Bonjour, comment ça va, blah blah, je m'appelle, blah blah. These people would never ever see me again, so I took advantage of that. And I had a bit of a milestone my second night in Paris. I approached these two girls next to Notre Dame, the cathedral. You know, the one where the Disney movie, there's that hunchback that lives on top. Yeah, that hunchback probably... I was that hunchback. <laughs> Whatever. So I approached these two girls next to Notre Dame. One was from England and the other one was a local Parisian, or I should say Parisienne, because feminine. After some steady, comfortable conversation, I asked both of them out to dinner, right there, right then. It's what we in the pickup community call an instant date. And we were later joined by their Romanian friend, also a female, and we went out and had an awesome meal, hung out by the Eiffel Tower and howled at the moon, not give a fuck for one night, and it was awesome. I had a thing for the English girl, but it was just one night and we didn't exchange contacts. But it was an achievement. The old me would have never dreamed of doing anything like that. Random approach. You know, just... And, I mean, like, three checks at once? Dude, seriously? Seriously? So yeah, I came back from that trip and I've been a stout believer in game ever since. A believer in stepping up to the plate of life, of destiny, of challenging yourself and confronting your fears and demons. And your, there's a word for this, inadequacies. Things that you aren't good at, you can change. All it takes is determination, patience, and persistence. And once you've gone through this, you end up becoming a supreme badass at the end of that journey. After all that mess, I finally got my first kiss, laid to rest my past as and emerged as this flaming fireball of awesomeness that is post-2013 Son of Terra 92. And the thing is, this skill, this mentality, this mindset doesn't just apply to women. It, it also applies to what you want to get in life. I realized that I should take a stand for what I want. I want to be an astronomer. I want to be a genius billionaire playboy scientist. And it takes a game mentality, it, it takes an outcome independence mentality and all these things that I learned from game to achieve that shit, to achieve what you want to do. Stop being a pussy, stop being a pushover in life, especially if you're a dude, especially, especially if you want to be a masculine man. Stop being a pushover in life, take action and do what you want to do, not what your parents want to do, not what your society wants you to do, not what your, not what your woman wants you to do, not what your government wants you to do, but what you want to do as a human being. And, and, and learning game was an instrumental part of altering that mindset, of acquiring that forward thinking mentality mindset that I ain't gonna put up with bullshit anymore. And in my opinion, learning game and pickup skills was far more important than learning all the bullshit that I learned in engineering. And I learned a ton of bullshit. Four years of bullshit. So yeah, today I consider game as an essential part of being a straight with a capital S straight up masculine chivalrous chivalrous complete dude a man you gotta have it to survive in this world today and i'm gonna teach game to my children if i ever have children but that's a topic best left for a later video that's all for me son of terror 92 signing out see you guys next time stay tuned rate comment and subscribe my name is son of terror 92 and i will see you next time Boop.